Okay, so we're going to consider a confidence interval to test hypothesis. And so consider this scenario. Noodle man noodles makes noodles. Each package of noodles has an advertised weight of 15 ounces. And so I know this is the expected population. Noodle man also knows that it won't, every package won't exactly be 15 ounces, but believes the noodle making machine is calibrated so most of the packages are. If the packages aren't 15 ounces, then Noodleman will have to shut down the factory, recalibrate his noodle machine, which is expensive. To decide if he needs to shut the factory down, they take a random sample of 88 packages, weigh them down, and find, and find that the mean of the sample is that with a standard deviation of this. They don't have 15 ounce noodle packages, they run the risk of a lawsuit for making false claims. We want to state the null and I alternative hypothesis. Well, the null hypothesis is simply that the mean is equal to 15. Whereas the alternative hypothesis is that the mean is not 15. He wants it to be exactly 15. So if I think, so I am going to do a t interval for this because it told me to do a inter confidence interval with alpha being 0 0.05. So alpha equal to 0 0.05 corresponds to a 95% confidence interval because they add up to 100% in total. All right, so there's alternatives. Now let's look at our numbers. We know x bar is equal to 14.87 s is equal to 0 0.58. N is equal to 88. So alpha I know is 0 0.05. And so my degrees of freedom is going to be 87. And I know it's a confidence interval. So from our, from our formula booklet, if we look at our formula booklet, we know that our confidence interval is here. Here's our for an unknown variance. It's x bar plus minus t with the standard deviation as given. So it's going to be x bar plus or minus t star times s over the square root of n. And so I know that's going to be 14.87 plus or minus t star times 14.87 over 0.58 divided by the root of 88. And if I just throw this in my calculator, make life easy for myself, I'm going to do number eight. I've done it a few times. And I have statistics, not data. And my stats say this is 14.87. 0 0.58 is the standard deviation. N is 88. Confidence level is 0.95. And then I'm going to calculate. And my confidence interval is 14.747 comma 14.993. So my implications from this, this is what I was looking for, 15. 15 is not in the interval, therefore, I am going to reject H naught and claim the machine is producing uh, an average noodle pack that is not, that is not 15 ounces. All right, so that is my conclusion in context. All right, so now in reality, we have no idea if the machine is working correctly or not. We never really do. We just have statistics to help us. So we're going to discuss the implications of these scenarios. So we're going to discuss what's called a type 1 and type 2 error in this context. All right, so in reality, let me make a little grid here. Okay, we know that there is a truth out there. 
and this truth it is unknown we have no idea what is happening to our machine we know that it could be making 15 ounce packages or it's not making 15 ounce packages now we have our claims right our claim says oh it's making 15 ounce packages if the claim says it's making 15 ounce packages and it is well that is a good thing that's makes us happy that's the way it should be but if we claim by statistics that it's not making 15 ounce package or it is making 15 it's not well that is a problem similarly I could claim it is not making 15 ounce packages which is what we just did we claimed it's not making 15 ounce packages and the truth could be that it's not well that is the right decision you want to fix your machine that is a good thing but every so often we know by statistics if we would make this confidence interval do the same thing a hundred times not in this particular example 95 percent of them would capture the true value we don't know if this was one of those 95 percent or not because five out of a hundred times it will not capture the true value and if that happens then that's the scenario here we claim it's not making those noodle packages where in truth it is that happens in this case five percent of the time the probability of that happening is alpha and we call this a type one error so clever the other one is called a type two error and that is we call that beta that happens if we claim it's true but it's not so in terms of in terms of mr noodleman if we claim the machine is working correctly and it's not if it's a type 2 error then he could be he could be sued for for false advertising he's selling packages that are not 15 ounces if it's a type 1 error if we claim he's not having the 15 ounce packages and he is in truth doing it then what we've done here is we've we've shut the machine shut down and we've recalibrated the machine and we didn't need to the machine was working fine and so we wasted money that's the consequence of incorrect statistics the thing is we will never know and so that's your introduction to type 1 type 2 error and using confidence interval to test a hypothesis